This is Bob. Bob has just come home hungry from a long day at work and needs your help to find something nutritious to eat. Bob's got some eggs, steak, and pastries in his fridge, but his doctor recently just told him to watch his cholesterol. So, how can we help Bob? Well, first, what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a waxy substance in your blood. Your liver makes the cholesterol you need, but it can also come from foods like meat, dairy products, and foods high in saturated fats. There are two main types of cholesterol the low density lipoprotein, which is known as bad cholesterol, and high density lipoprotein, which is good cholesterol. Your body needs enough good cholesterol to build healthy cells, but high levels of bad cholesterol can lead to fatty deposits in your blood vessels. This fatty deposit buildup is also known as atherosclerosis, a condition that makes it hard for blood to flow through your body and increases your risk of cardiovascular diseases like heart attack or stroke. Now, after a routine checkup, Bob is prescribed some cholesterol medications from his doctor to help manage his cholesterol levels. However, he has no idea how to even pronounce the name of the medications. Let's take a closer look at what medications Bob was prescribed. The medications prescribed are called resuvastatin, or sometimes another one may be given called atorvastatin. Another name for resuvastatin is Crestor, and another name for atorvastatin is Lipitor. These are the brand name of the generic medications. Now, both of these medications are part of the statin family of medications, as indicated by their statin suffixes, and are the most common cholesterol lowering medications prescribed. Now let's learn a bit more about cholesterol and how statins work in this whole process. While only 20% of LDL cholesterol comes from our food, 80% is actually made in our liver. This is why statins, which work by targeting the liver and stopping cholesterol production, can have a much greater effect at reducing our LDL cholesterol than diet alone. Statins are often taken orally once or twice per day and are available as tablets or as capsules. Once ingested, the statins travel through the stomach to the intestines where they're absorbed and enter the bloodstream. From here, they enter the liver and in the liver cells, the first step to making cholesterol occurs when a molecule called HMG-CoA interacts with an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. This interaction produces something called malvolonic acid, which is later used in cholesterol production. So, where do statins come in? Well, the statins in the bloodstream travel to the liver and enter the cells through a special transport protein. Once inside the cell, statins bind to the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase, and as a result, when HMG-CoA tries to interact with the reductase, it is blocked, thus putting cholesterol production to a stop. Now, another way to think about cholesterol synthesis is to treat it like a kitchen recipe. So let's say you're making a soup, and the first step requires you to chop some onions. You have full access to a knife, so you can easily chop all the onions you want to make your soup. But all of a sudden, your friend, Staden, borrows your only knife to cut her carrots. Without the knife, you have nothing to cut your onions with, and now you can't make your soup until she's gone. This is the same way the statins borrow HMG-CoA reductase, so that the cells can no longer make cholesterol. Now that Bob understands how statin medications can help reduce his bad cholesterol, he's excited to start taking them. But first, he wants to know more about managing his statin medications at home. Now let's help him out with that. First of all, when taking statin medications or any medications in general, it is very important for your doctor to be aware of other medications you might be taking so that they can let you know if you may experience drug interactions. Make sure to always bring a clear and updated medications list with you to every appointment. This should include prescription or non-prescription drugs, inhalers, creams, ointments, vitamins, or mineral supplements. And please refer to our previous video on what makes a good medication list. And it's through this way that your doctor can keep track of all of your medications and come up with the best therapy for you moving forwards. Next, it's also important to continuously monitor your health as you take statins. One important step is to get a blood test done every three months to regularly keep track of your cholesterol levels. 
And remember, even lifestyle and diet changes can significantly help lower your cholesterol levels. You could work on exercising regularly or adopting a low fat, low cholesterol diet alongside your statin medications, all to keep your cholesterol levels as low as possible. It's also important to monitor symptoms you may experience while taking your statin medications. While most people feel fine taking the statin medications, a small percentage of people experience some symptoms, which often present as muscle soreness. In these situations, it's important to consider if there are any other culprits that could have contributed to these symptoms, and many times can be traced back to arthritis or intense exercise or even the act of taking a pill alone. Still, It's important to inform your doctor of any such concerns or symptoms you have about the medication so that they can work with you to determine the best course of action, whether it be adjusting your dosage, switching to a different statin or different cholesterol-lowering medication, or anything else that the two of you together believe is best. Now that Bob is educated on how to manage his medications, he is very excited to start taking them and become a healthier person. Let's now take a look at some other cholesterol-lowering medications. We have already talked about resuvastatin and atorvastatin, which is known as Lipitor. But some other statins are called fluvastatin and simvastatin, which you may have come across. As you can see here, all generic names of the statin medications end in statin as the suffix. However, there are plenty of other medications that help lower cholesterol, but aren't statins. And a common one which you may have come across is ezetimibe or ez which is a cholesterol absorption inhibitor. Oftentimes, a combination of different classes of cholesterol-lowering medications, such as Crestor and ez may be used to further reduce cholesterol levels. It's always important to have a conversation with your doctor to determine what medication is best for you. As for Bob, he is taking his cholesterol medications regularly on a daily basis and feeling better than ever. He is happy that he now knows more about his medication, how it works, how to monitor his health while taking these medications, and will work hard to live a healthier lifestyle.